Hello everybody. It's me, Maggie, sitting in for Diane. I'm Maggie from the Maggie and Enid videos. Diane was too busy, so I'm sitting in for her. In this video, we're going to talk about the truth about lie. Now, what is lie, you might ask? Well, it's an acronym. It stands for Linux is everywhere. And we are going to examine the truth of this statement. Now, before we start, later on in this video, I needed a couple of buttons to press, a boo and a yay button. I was gonna 3D print them, but I don't have a 3D printer. So I just had to 2D print them, but they do work. I'll, I'll give you a little demo if I can find out where it, where, where, all right. They do work. I'll give you a little demo. Let's, let's press boo, boo, boo's up here. And now we'll give yay a shot. Yeah! Right. So that's out of the way. Now let's look at the systems in this house. Let's start with my main work machine. This is an absolute beast. It's an AMD Ryzen 3970X processor with 32 cores, 64 threads, 64 gigabytes of RAM, water cooled, Whoa! more disks than you can shake a stick at, and four video outputs. Does this run Windows? No, mm. it does not. Would you buy a Lamborghini and then put a Lada engine in it? No, of course not. I wouldn't let Windows anywhere near this machine. And if you are the sort of person who would run Windows on this machine, just out of here. Get away. I don't want you watching my videos, but on the way out, just press like. Also, before all you free software people get your knickers in a knot and say, no, it runs GNU Linux. I'm going to talk about the Linux kernel in this video specifically. So it's just Linux. If you don't like it, go away. Press the like button before you leave. I have another PC in my living room. Naturally, it runs Linux too. This Raspberry Pi runs my mail server and my asterisk phone server, and it does file backups on my workstation. Runs Linux, obviously, it's a Raspberry Pi. I have a security camera in my house, and if you follow the cable along, you'll see that it feeds into a Raspberry Pi running Linux. And then, of course, I've got this Raspberry Pi in my living room running Linux. Maggie, I hear you say. That was too easy. All of those were designed to run Linux. What else have you got? Well, there's my phone. It runs Android. Runs an ancient kernel, 3.18.71. And of course, it's not getting any more updates anymore because in order to keep consumers upgrading and consuming, we have to make the existing devices obsolete, even if they're perfectly fine. Isn't capitalism grand? If you're one of those people who view phones as a fashion item to be changed every year or two, just go away, you e-waste producing slave of consumerism. I'm not interested in you. Go away, but just press like on your way out. I have a couple of Samsung tablets. One is uh, old and broken, but it, it did run Linux. I've opened it up. I'm not going to open it on camera because it's a bloody pain in the ass. And uh, I've got an ancient, ancient Samsung tablet. Of course, it's not getting any upgrades, of course. But I was able to install uh, an open source Android version on this. And it does run, but very, very slowly. Uh, of course, these tablets, the Samsungs, and of course, my phone, uh, they don't have user replaceable batteries because because they want you to buy a new one. They don't want you to be able to fix your items. So let's have a boo for Samsung. And let's have a boo for Lenovo. That's right. What else? Well, this is my DSL router that lives in my basement. I checked it out, Linux kernel 3.4.11 on an ARM CPU. I also have this gadget I use as a wireless access point. Linux kernel 2.6.36 on ARM. 2.6.36? 
I remember that kernel in 2023. It's like a finely aged wine full of oaky vulnerabilities. I have a Roku 2 TV thingy, Linux kernel 2.6.37. Not quite the same vintage as a wireless access point, but it's close. I have an analog telephony adapter that converts my old landline phone to voice over IP. It runs Linux on ARM, kernel version 3.4.30. How about laptops? Well, I have this Pinebook Pro here. Originally it came with Manjaro Linux, but I replaced it with Ambien because I know Debian and I don't want to learn something new, so I thought I'd do that. All my older machines run some form of Debian, so I have a kind of duckling-like attachment to Debian. Let's open up the Pinebook Pro and look inside. I love opening things up, don't you? Look, if you don't like opening things up, you're an incurious lump. Just get out of here. Go away. Press like and then go away. Right. Uh, Got to get my uh, tools out, I suppose. Right, we'll just move the buttons out the way for now. And uh, we'll open the laptop. And uh, don't worry, you won't see much on screen. But I'll, uh, I'll take photos and I'll show you up close later on. But through the magic of video, it'll appear as if I'm doing it right in the video. So let me get started on opening this thing up. Is there a ton of screws? Right, I think we got that open. I don't know why the... Oh, there we go. Oh, exciting. The cover just lifts right out. And what have we got inside? I'll, I'll, I'll try to show it to you. I hope you can see that. But, oh, what was that? I think I just, oh, it's a little spacer thing for the screw. That's all right, I'll fix that later. You see, what you've got inside is essentially empty space. You've got an ARM-based single board computer here with a, a rock chip. What is it? 3399 I think. Yes. Rock chip 3399 which is always mounted at a jaunty 45 degree angle. I don't know why that is. You got a little daughter board here with a, a USB and an SD card slot and the audio. You got a big ass battery that you can replace. You can replace the battery. In fact, every component on this machine is replaceable. You can replace the battery, the keyboard, the screen. You can you can buy all these parts. Uh, the actual operating system is stored on an EMMC chip, which is just, you can't really see it. I'll do a close-up. It's under this tape. And this board pops off, and you can put in a USB, uh, a USB adapter. So that if you brick your Pinebook Pro, you can flash a new image. That's a really good design, right? Bring back the buttons. Let's have a, let's have a yay. A yay for Pinebook. They deserve it. It's a well-designed piece of kit. Now, as a laptop, the performance is not what you would call spectacular. It's, it's sort of slow. But if I'm traveling somewhere and I just need something to do basic web browsing, word processing and whatnot, it's, it's entirely adequate. All right, I'll fiddle with this later. Put it back, right? You put, put you on there and you can uh, go away. Just wait out of the view of the camera. So what other laptops have I got? Well, I've got this... I've got this giant <laughs> Dell. Ancient, ancient machine that I got for free from a former workplace. They were giving them away because... How the hell do you open it? There we go. They were giving them away because they were obsolete. But it's actually the best laptop I've ever owned. Now, this did actually come with Windows, but I remedied that. I remedied that as soon as I could. Uninstall Windows, put Linux on, and it bobs your uncle. Right, what else we got? All right, we've got this Acer Aspire 1. This is a little tiny sort of netbook thing, but actually has a, a, a hard drive in it, like an actual spinning hard drive, which is unusual. Came with Windows, fixed that, runs Linux. Right. 
What other laptops have we got? Well, we got this one. This is a Lenovo laptop. Oh dear. Now you see this one. I'm afraid to say this one. This one runs Windows. What are you doing with the Windows laptop, Maggie, you might ask? Well, here's the thing. This used to be my daughter's. She got herself a faster one. And so I bought that one from her. And I kept Windows on it because I have a Garmin uh, GPS thing in my car. And in order to update the maps on my Garmin GPS, I have to run Windows. Now, that's stupid. Garmin uses Linux in a lot of its embedded products. And yet, they won't let you update your maps from Linux. You have to do it from Windows. I've got this stupid laptop with a half messed up install of Windows 10 that I boot once every two years to update my Garmin maps. Now, I think Garmin, Garmin? Oh, I just realized the buttons have been upside down. Garmin deserves a boo. I have a Samsung Smart TV. Linux. It's a thing called Tizen, actually. And finally, I have an Xbox One X. It does not run Linux. Well, the thing is, it was a gift from my boyfriend, so we'll let that one pass. I mean, he's a Windows developer, so... But despite our religious differences, we still get along. Now, you might notice a conspicuous lack of Apple devices. I don't own any Apple devices. If you want to be a walled garden inhabiting, soy latte imbibing, fashionista, hipster, overpriced Apple fanboy or fangirl, just f*** out of here, but press like on your way out. Now, I do have a, a small coffee cup heater, this thing. I wonder what it's running. Shall we open it up? Let's open it up and have a look. Ooh, this one needs a big screwdriver, so I'm just gonna pop next door and get a big screwdriver. I'll be right back. Don't go away. All right, got the big screwdriver. Now let's get to work on this puppy. And there we go. Through the magic of filmmaking, we got it open. Let's take a look what's inside. There's no operating system. It's just an element connected across the mains. There's no CPU or anything. Did you honestly think there was such a thing as a smart coffee warmer? I mean, don't be ridiculous. If you were gullible enough to think that this ran software, <laughs> you just get out of here, press the like button, and go check your email and reply to the Nigerian prince right away. I'm gonna put this back together again like my coffee hot. Oh dear, I've messed something up. I hate this cheap consumer grade shit. No, oh dear. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's misaligned. Need a chiropractor to align it, eh? There we go. Oh, I think oh, it's got little clips that are not in great shape. All right, well, we'll just brute force it now and put it back together again. I mean, I've got to have hot coffee, right? Good as new. Off you go. And to finish off, we've got this. This is an ancient D-Link consumer grade router that was owned by my late mother, the antennas busted um so i thought oh gee i wonder what this runs so let's open it up and have a look there you go that's what's inside a bunch of stuff i'll have a closer look oh don't worry i'll show you better pictures and i'll i'll walk you through what's inside this then shall i so let's see what's in here it's pretty much only five chips 
Uh, the wind bond W9825G6 is just a 32 megabyte RAM chip. The MXIC 25L through 20 chip is a little 8 megabyte spy flash chip. That's where the software is installed. Uh, what else? We've got a little chip here that's a bit tough to identify, but it's right near the power supply and a big inductor, so I figure it's a power supply chip. And sure enough, it's a step-down voltage converter. The last two chips are more interesting. The RTL8192 chip was inside some shielded traces, so I figured it was the Wi-Fi chip, and I was right. It's some sort of Wi-Fi controller. And the main chip is this, the RTL8196E, a system on a chip with a processor and Ethernet circuitry. This is the boss chip. It does all the heavy lifting. I did a search and I found the manual for this chip. Here it is. Oh, dear. I'm not allowed to show it to you. Anyway, it's 79 pages long. So the poor engineers at D-Link had to read and digest these 79 pages plus the data sheets for all the other chips and come up with a design. Let's have a yay for the D-Link engineers, shall we? Yeah! But wait, I found this on the internet. What could it be? Oh my, it's a reference design schematic. Here on page two is the RTL8192 Wi-Fi controller. Page three is the Ethernet transformer. Page four, we have our power supply and there's our friend the voltage regulator chip. And ooh, look at page six, that's the meat. We have our RTL8196 system on a chip by a little spy flash holding the software. And what's this, SD arm? Is that an arm call? No, my friends, it's a typo. Let's give the real tech proofreaders a boo, shall we? Now look here at the bottom left corner of the CPU. There are a couple of UART connections. A UART is just a serial port, and there it is, a UART header on the right side of page six. Hmm, can we connect a serial cable and watch it boot? Well, of course we can. Now, the D-Link engineers didn't populate a header, but that's no problem. I found the pads and I attached some wires. I tried soldering a wire to the ground, but the middle layer of the board is just a copper ground plane that sucks all the heat away from my, my useless soldering iron. So I just found a more convenient ground and attached a wire. We hook it up to the serial to USB converter and boot it up. All right. Well, now that we've got the USB to serial port adapter hooked up, we'll fire up our terminal program over here. That connects us to the serial port and we'll go over to the router and we'll, we'll plug it in. Just give me a second and there we go. Oh, it's booting. Oh, there we go. We've got a Realtek chipset advertising itself running at 400 megahertz. And there we go, uncompressing Linux, it's booting the kernel, it's printing all sorts of fascinating stuff. Busybox, that's what I expect on, a, on an embedded system. Oh, the A192E is exciting, it merited, what, four, five? Four or five exclamation marks from the programmer. Prints a few other things, starting NTP, so we got a good clock, we've got BOA as a web server. And uh, there we go, we get dropped into a root shell, amazing. Right, let's uh, take a look and see what this puppy is running on. Oh dear, it's a very minimal installation. At BusyBox, they didn't even give us a name. No worries, let's take a look at what PROC CPU Info says. System type Philips Nino. I, I don't know what that is, I'll Google it later. And uh, the CPU model, here we go, R3000. And... Uh, I happened to open a web browser and, and look for what R3000 is, and uh, let's see, here it is on Wikipedia. It's a 32-bit RISC microprocessor chipset, and it's MIPS indeed. Uh, introduced in the late 80s, so it's pretty old, originally running at a top speed of 33.33 uh, 33 megahertz. 
But I guess the modern chips are a bit better. This one's running at, um, what was it, 400 megahertz. Now let's take a look. What is a Philips Nino? Philips Nino is a portable computer device. Look at that. It's sort of a Palm Pilot thingy. Who knew? So they must have used the same processor or a similar one. So there's some uh, computer archaeology for you. And that's it. So as you see, lie is not completely true, but it's mostly true. And if you've stuck around this long, God help you, hit that like button and you deserve a yay. If I can get on the screen, I'm very bad at this. Yeah.